how does someone go from constantly overspending and feeling overwhelmed by debt to gaining a complete control of their finances and living an extremely frugal lifestyle? Honestly, I think it might be easier than you think, but it requires some practices and mindsets that many people lack in our consumerist world. In this video, I will share 10 steps or habits that have been incredibly helpful in my journey. And these will not focus on like sweating the small stuff, trying to save just some pennies. These will focus on some big actions that can really make a change in your life and possibly save you thousands in the long term. Let's get to the step one. Find out where your money really goes. Start by gathering all your bank statements, credit card bills and all other personal finance records from the past three months. This is a very crucial step because many times our own perceptions of our spending habits will not match the reality. It could be that you think that, okay, you are spending so much money, your expenses are sky high and you're not frugal at all. But when you look at these bank statements, you actually realize, hey, I'm not spending that much money after all. Like I have all this money that I'm saving every month. But on the other hand, it could be the totally opposite that you think I'm living so frugally, I'm not spending any extra on anything. Then you check it and you have just so many unnecessary stuff in there. For example, when I did this for the first time, I realized how incredibly expensive it is to eat out compared to just cooking yourself. Like I was spending almost the same amount of money going out a few times than spending money on groceries like for the whole month. I thought to actually make this step a little bit easier for you and I created this template that you can get for free. The link is in the description. It's very similar to what I use to track my own expenses. I also left there some space so you can add things that I don't personally have as my expenses. If you have something quite unique or special, you can just add those to there. So download this template and use it. I think it's so much better to write down your actual expenses rather than just taking a look at them and think that, okay, everything is fine. Because when you write things down, you actually see the numbers and understand them much better. Doing this will give you a very good baseline and understanding where your money is actually going. And then we can move to the step two, which is define your frugal sweet spot. I personally think before you start to make any changes to live more frugally, you need to understand what frugal living means, especially if we are talking about extreme frugality. Somebody living in the US, for example, being in the upper middle class, this amount, like the expenses per month, could be $3,000. And you think that you are really living extremely frugally because the average could be much, much, much more. However, somebody being in the working class and living in, let's say, Thailand, this could be $300 per month. Like everything is can be covered with that amount if you live frugally. So really think about it. What is your goal? And what's the number that you will feel satisfied with? Because if that is $200 and you are living in the US, it's almost impossible, probably. You will be homeless and dumpster diving the food from like outside of grocery stores. And maybe that's not what you want with this lifestyle. So understand these things for you. If we are looking at my situation, living in Finland, my living expenses or all the expenses basically per month are less than $1,000. And that is quite below the average here. And I'm very happy with that. With that amount, I can still make some investments to certain things that I would like to learn, for example, in education and things like that. I don't feel really like deprived. I'm not, for example, cutting from some really essential things for my health. So find this balance for you. Step three, the art of sacrifice. Living a frugal lifestyle, especially an extreme frugal lifestyle, for sure requires sacrifices. You cannot just keep living like you have always lived if you want to make changes in this way of living. So after tracking your expenses, identify the things that you are ready to sacrifice, that you are ready to let go, that are not so essential for you. This could mean cutting out those night outs with friends or those expensive trips to other countries or simply, simply just getting your hair and nails done. As I mentioned in my last video where I talked about the seven levels of minimalism, we can actually live or survive with very, very little. But the question is how important it is for you to be extremely frugal, especially if you're not financially struggling and you are not doing 
because of that reason. A very good thing to look at from your expenses are the needs versus wants. So understand what are actual needs for you. What do you need to, to survive and to live? What are like really important living expenses and what are those wants? Do you need to go out to eat multiple times a week? Or do you need to buy that coffee every morning for Starbucks? Could you just make it yourself at home? For example, even though I love traveling, traveling to countries like the US or some other country in Asia like Japan or South Korea would be so expensive because I live in Northern Europe. And for me, even though that would be nice, it's not a need. I don't need to do that. And I'm not ready to spend that amount of money to just have that experience. It's just not worth it for me. And another very practical example actually from this week, my life, uh, was that my grandmother kind of lost her driving license. She's quite old and it's not anymore safe for her to drive. And she has a car and now I've been using it to visit her a couple of times a week. And now she's like offering to give that car to me, like donate that car to me completely. And of course, I'm very grateful for that offer. Like it's very nice. But for me, it's not an obvious yes. It is not. Because I understand even though I'm getting that car for free, it comes with so many different expenses. And as a car owner, you might understand that the costs of just keeping the car can add up really quickly. Of course, it makes my life so much easier, but is it worth all that money like this convenience? That's something that I'm thinking about right now a lot. Number four, monthly money checkup. Now we are kind of moving from steps to habits, so the order doesn't anymore matter that much, but I would suggest to do all of this if you actually want to start living more frugally. So in step one, I talked about checking your monthly expenses from the past three months. And now here we are talking about or building the habit to do this every single month after the month like is ending, especially if you feel like you are spending a lot of money easily, that it's not really in control, like all this spending. I don't do this anymore every month. I do it every now and then for my personal finances. But of course, for my own business, all the expenses, all the income, I have to do this still every single month. And sometimes it is really annoying, but it's just so healthy habit for the financial area of your life. When you keep doing this, it becomes just easier and easier. And probably there will be a point where you don't find it that useful anymore for you. You have like everything in place. Your habits are very frugal and maybe sometimes you are even too frugal that you should actually spend money on something because that could be useful. I feel many times that I'm in that point in my life that I shouldn't overthink too much about spending money on certain things. Habit number five, stop buying useless shit. If you will take only one thing from this video, take this one, start this habit. We have so much stuff these days. And of course, it's easier said than done to stop buying more and more. But think about it. How much stuff do you actually need in your life to be happy? Do you really think that what you currently have is not already enough? How much more do you need to still get that you feel, okay, now I have enough things? There's this quote that really summarizes our consumerist society. We buy things we don't need with money we don't have to impress people we don't like. I'm pretty sure you have heard this before and I believe that that is just so true. If you find something nice and you are unsure whether you should buy it or not, I would say 90% of the cases you don't actually need it and you could live your life with the, very much the same quality without that purchase. If you are really doubting whether you should buy it or not, just don't buy. When you follow this habit, you will save so much money in the long term and you will be thanking yourself later for not buying all that stuff. For example, I am very, very grateful for my younger self that I didn't buy all those things that the people of my age were buying. And now I have a little bit of extra. I have this sense of freedom and I can do more things. I have more flexibility in my life because of those good decisions in my past. Since this might be a difficult habit to break, I actually made a whole video about it. You can check it after this one. There I go more through how you actually do this, like how to stop buying stuff. But now let's move to the next habit, which is to reduce your living costs. The alternative title I actually thought for this one was big moves, big savings. So here I want to ask you a couple of questions. 
do you actually need to live where you are living right now in that city in that neighborhood or area and then do you need to live in that house where you are living right now especially if it's quite big or expensive in some other sense this is not something that you can change and don't want to change overnight it will probably take months or years to change this but it's something to really think about for instance let's take finland it's a nice country <laughs> let's take the capital helsinki it's so so much more expensive to live there compared to all the other cities in finland and the question then is why do you have to move there move there why do you have to live there is it really worth it i understand if you have a work there and if you have kids and they go to school there have all their friends all your life is there i understand it but if you are 20 something single and you don't really have life figured out yet why would you move there when you could move into so many other places and have much more sense of freedom at least how i think about this some cities in us for example could be new york la san francisco or in Europe, London, Paris, like all these big capitals. You have to make so much money from your job and probably work so long hours just to afford that lifestyle in those places. For sure, there are more opportunities in those bigger cities. But I believe if you care about opportunities, you can increase those doing other ways. For example, if we're talking about career, increase your skill set. That will already open so many other doors for you when you are very skilled in certain things. I just believe that it's so normalized to pay insanely big rents in these cities or even in general live in big houses. But if you really want to be extremely frugal, consider other options. Living in a smaller place or in some city that is not so big. Maybe it's more quiet, some peaceful place. Maybe you would like that even much more. This is the area where you can probably save the most amount of money over the long term. So even if you think that what I'm saying doesn't make any sense, just take this seriously and at least consider it. Habit 7. Do it yourself. I worked in customer service for many years and that gave me the access to see some information that not a lot of people know. For example, what's the price that the company pays for an item and what's the price that they are selling it with to normal consumers. And there's usually a huge difference. The company might buy something for $2 and sell it with like 30 And I kind of get it because you have to pay a lot of taxes and salaries and there's a lot of costs for the business. But as a consumer, you start to think, if that actually is worth that amount of money, why am I paying so much for it? I think it's also the same thing for services. What the company pays for example, for somebody to clean your house versus what you are paying for them or a moving service, you're moving from a place to another. It's like you are paying a lot of, lot of money for those, but the average employees, they don't get that much. The company takes a huge amount of that. So if you want to be extremely frugal, you can save so much money by doing things yourself. For example, when your pants breaks, like mine broke some time ago, I didn't just trash them and go to buy new pants and I didn't even take them to somebody to fix them because those would cost at almost the same price as the pants. I just fix them myself. Of course, it could be that you need to buy some tools to do it, but they don't cost that much and then you can just do them always using those and maybe you need to watch some YouTube tutorials. So it takes some time, but you save so much money and maybe even learn new skills. However, here I want to say, know your limits. Recently, our washing machine broke. And of course, my first idea, I will just fix it myself. I watched some YouTube tutorials and it seemed to be very difficult because I don't even know what's the exact issue with the washing machine. So then I called a friend who knows a thing or two about this. And he said, don't do it. It's not worth it. It's quite hard. He has tried, his family members have tried, and there's a huge risk that you are doing it wrong, something happens, and then it's gonna cost so much more money. So just either give it to somebody to repair or just buy a new one if it's like totally broken. Habit 8. Stop overspending on new things. This strategy has already saved me hundreds, if not thousands, and I'm not even that old yet. I have recently, or in the recent years, purchased mainly things second hand when it comes to clothes when it comes to furniture almost like everything i would say well food obviously not 
maybe one thing that I don't buy anymore secondhand are electronics. So if I'm buying a new PC, for example, or a new camera, I don't buy those secondhand because as a business I can get everything tax-free and I can get a really good warranty for those. But if you buy them from like random person online and they are just broken, you cannot get anything back. So I had a couple of experiences like that and then I realized, okay, let's just do these expensive things to save from. But when it comes to more of these everyday affordable things, it's easier than ever to buy things secondhand with like Facebook, Marketplace, eBay, all these different platforms. And it's so popular here in Europe, especially in Finland. I don't know what's the percentage, but a lot of lot of people buy things just secondhand because it's so good way to save money. And it just gives you so good feeling when you know that you are part of that circular economy. Somebody has something that they don't anymore need and they can just sell it to somebody else who actually needs exactly that thing and then they get something in exchange. Whether it's another thing like you are trading something or whether it's money or time or whatever. It really reminds me of the time before we had this modern times and modern world when just average normal people were doing these exchanges and you didn't always have to go to some shopping mall and buy from a big company if you needed something. And I just love being part of that and not this industry that is burning so many clothes just because somebody didn't buy them and manufacturing things that nobody actually needs. So yes, for me this is about saving money but also about so many other good benefits and values. Habit 9. Cut car expenses. At the start of this video, I said that here we are not talking about some tricks to save pennies. We're talking about things that can save you a lot of money. And if you want to do that, to go from a normal spender to somebody who is extremely frugal, you have to take a look at the things where you are spending the most money on, the top three expenses. And I'm pretty sure if you have a car, that is one of the things for you. There are a couple of things to consider when it comes to a car. I mean, first of all, do you really need to use that? Could you use the public transportation or walk or use a bicycle or even a skateboard rather than your car all the time? Usually these options are cheaper than using your car. But I understand that in many places in the world, you cannot just ditch your car completely and start using your bicycle. For example, I used to work in a place that wasn't accessible with public transportation and it was so many kilometers or miles away that I couldn't walk or even bicycle there every morning and then back in the afternoon. I would be just completely exhausted. So yes, I get it, especially in the US, this might be more challenging. But if you have the chance to try this, to be without the car, like not use it that much, at least give it a try. For those people that this really isn't an option at all, there are a couple of other things that you could consider. I mean, first of all, how much your car is consuming fuel? Could there be alternative cars that are just consuming less? Maybe an electric car, who knows? Then how much are you paying taxes and insurance and the maintenance cost for your car every year? Are there, for example, brands or newer cars, older cars, that where the expenses are so much lower. You can do some research and find out if there are actually these benefits for certain cars in your area. And then there's something else. Some people go into debt to own a car. They cannot afford it, the car that they want, so they buy it and there's some interest rate and that will actually be very, very expensive. So before buying any car, Think about it. Do you actually need that expensive car? Is it worth it for you? Are you buying it for an actual need like a pickup truck? Or is it just for some social validation? Habit 10. Prioritize your efforts. When it comes to especially living expenses and utilities, there are many things that you can negotiate. For example, your electricity bills, your gas bills, your phone subscription. And it is very good to do some research on this and choose the wisest option, especially if you are warming up your house with electricity, for example. The difference might be hundreds per month or at least every year between a good deal and a bad deal. But if you are living a lifestyle where these things don't really matter like that much, you don't really care if you are paying $20 for something or $25, then just don't sweat the small stuff. Focus on the more important things. I spent a lot of time last year negotiating a good phone deal, like did my absolute best. I spent maybe three or four hours in total for that process 
and I was able to save like two euros, two dollars per month, which is not that much. Imagine what you can get every month with like two dollars. You buy a, a juice or soda and these deals are usually not permanent. I have to do it again next year. So even though these are places where you can actually save money, make sure that you are doing the previous nine things what I have mentioned in this video well before you start really like trying to save every dollar, every penny in these things. Get my expenses tracking sheet using the link below and you can watch this video next if you want to go more into this frugal living lifestyle. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to stay kind and meaningful in your own beautiful journey. See you in the next one.